Lamar Jackson is demonstrating the ultimate form of quarterback, a style that we have never seen playing the position like never before. No quarterback has ever run the ball like him, and now that his passing ability, offensive scheme, and offensive weapons have drastically improved, NFL defenses simply have no idea how to defend him. You used to be able to stack the box and force him to beat you through the air with subpar receivers who were never schemed open, but now he's gotten way better as a pocket passer, he's gotten receivers who can actually make plays themselves, and he's gotten a scheme that improves his passing instead of hurts it. Today, we'll dive into the film to discover just how hard it is to defend 2023 Lamar Jackson. But before we do, I want to thank this season's sponsor, Prize Picks. Prize Picks is a daily fantasy sports site where you can pick players every day. They've got a ton of sports, really all the days, pretty much all the players. If you want to play and predict how a player does, Prize Picks is the move. To get going, you choose two to six players and select whether they go higher or lower than their projection. I think CJ Stroud absolutely goes off in a big spot against a middle-of-the-road Colts defense. You can actually see he's a demon, which means his number is higher, but I get more money if I win. And then I'll add Bijan Robinson hitting the over two, because even Arthur Smith can't galaxy brain that one away. Prize Picks is so much fun to play, it's the only app I've been using all season. It just makes football or any sport that much more fun when you're adding in picks. It's easy to get your money out. It's easy to play in just a couple of seconds. If you want to give it a shot, use my promo code Rollins and they'll match your first deposit up to $100. That's promo code Rollins. The first thing that pops out on film, especially against the 49ers and Dolphins, arguably two of the best teams in the league, is that nobody knows how to rush Lamar. Defenses are so terrified of his ability to escape the pocket and run down the field that defensive linemen have to slow their rush to keep contained in the pocket, which gives him all the time in the world. He's developed as a passer a ton, but a part of that is how lax defenses have to play when rushing him, which gives him tons of time to sit back and rip him. He has the second longest time to throw in the NFL at 3.2 seconds because he's often getting 6, 7, 8. The Dolphins try just rushing forward to keep as many bodies in coverage as possible, so they use stunts to force him into pressure, but Lamar is him. They rush Andrew Van Ginkle and Christian Wilkins heavy up the field to force him to his left. This gives him the idea that heat is coming from that side. Plus, when he sees Bradley Chubb slanting inside, he's supposed to feel the pressure both from his right and from the interior, which flushes him to his left, which is where Zach Sealer is waiting with a trap. But even when the scheme is perfect, Lamar is Lamar, and he runs up and down the field. Because defenses can't be aggressive in rushing him, they're forced to give him space and, like I said, make him play quarterback, which has kind of worked in the past, but not this year. When defenses play closer to the line to keep him in check, he stays in the pocket and rips up their coverage. Here the Bengals are playing a specialized cover one man rack coverage to stop Lamar from running. They have Dax Hill, Logan Wilson, and Jermaine Pratt playing kind of a zone on Isaiah Likely and Gus Edwards. Then whoever doesn't take a receiver has Lamar as a spy, rat defender, playing a zone in the middle. Lamar starts to his left, hoping Chidobe Awuzie is playing zone coverage and bailing deep on Rashad Bateman's route, which Bateman comes back on. But when Awuzie bumps him, Lamar easily progresses to the backside dig to Odell. Backside digs are impressive because it demonstrates a lot of skills you're really throwing a route you can't really see before you release. It shows you know the overall coverage, you're accurate, and you're playing on time when you're hitting it directly over the middle. His pre-snap processing has also improved, which is where you process what the defense is going to do before they do it. And the new offensive coordinator Todd Munkin has given him more freedom to attack defenses with his mind, and Lamar has showed he can deliver. He sees the Dolphins are in a one-high coverage and have already been playing a ton of man coverage, so he checks to the one-high beater slot fade we always talk about on this channel, and from the back view, look at his pocket movement. It's not ideal he doesn't set his feet, but that also makes his accuracy on this 40-yard seed that much more impressive. Look at where he's able to stick this thing on Odell. He's improved his ability to pass while maintaining the playmaking ability with his legs and his arm even when the defense calls the perfect coverage. Here he starts to his right, but as a backside line concept, double slants, which he'll progress to after. When Odell feels the corner crashing down on him and knows his slant won't be open, he improvises, and to hit a backside slant in quick game from a one-step dropback, 
when the slant runs an improv route is insanity. Defenses don't know how to rush them, they don't know how to defend them, even when they do everything perfect, there's just no way to stop them. For this example, the 49ers have an awesome defensive play call, with honestly, an awesome disguise. They put their safety Jair Brown on Isaiah Likely, which is a man coverage tell, like body on like body, and then they have their nickel cornerback Diamador Lenore showing blitz inside the slot receiver, with safety to Sean Gibson overly, obviously trying to stack him, which is a clear indicator Lenore is blitzing so Gibson can cover him. At least, that's what they want him to think. But then the Niners drop out into this cover for zone coverage, executing what's really a beautiful disguise, but almost nothing matters against this man. If it is this all-out blitz, which it looks like, he figures he'll hit the out route against the safety who should be inside leverage. And that actually should work against cover for zone 2, because the hook defender is leveraged inside as well. But when that isn't open, he tries to come back to Rashad Bateman, who's breaking down on his comeback route. Not open either, so he scrambles around and makes a play. Like, imagine how frustrating this is. Plus the fact that while the 49ers don't have their A-line on the field, they still have Nick Bosa, Randy Gregory's in here too but they just don't know how to handle Lamar in the pocket, even with a good coverage disguise behind him. Bosa gets chipped, but kind of doesn't know how to proceed after that. Gregory really only knows how to use speed up the field and runs himself off. The D-tackles are just kind of holding space, not attacking, and Lamar is able to squirt free and pick up an easy 10. He has become nearly impossible to defend, and a big part of that is the philosophical change the Ravens have made bringing in Todd Munkin as an offensive coordinator and getting rid of Greg Roman. Roman gets a bad rap in my opinion. Early in Lamar's career, he wouldn't have been successful with a typical offensive coordinator. Roman brought a hyper-specific QB run heavy scheme that helped Lamar slowly develop and then later outgrow. So now that he has all the skills honed over time, it makes sense that Roman is out and Munkin is in. Good offensive play callers help their quarterback with scheme. Great offensive play callers almost hold the quarterback's hand and scheme guys wide open. Not that Lamar needs his handheld, but look how open these freaking receivers are. Munkin is good enough to isolate defenders and attack them, which speaks to his ability to game plan during the week and then actually execute it on Sundays. He isolated Jerome Baker's replacement Duke Riley against the Dolphins, where he knew Miami would play a steady diet of man coverage, so he positions Isaiah Likely in what's called a nasty split, five yards off the tackle, so that Likely can rub Riley and help Justice Hill win down the field. When Riley goes under Likely, Hill can just run over the top, and it's a wide open receiver schemed open by Munkin. He really helps Lamar here by shifting into this formation pre-snap, where the Ravens start Hill outside to see if Riley follows. When Lamar sees him lined up, then sees him follow Hill into the backfield, this is all he needs to execute the play. He checks into it with a little hand sign, and we are off to the races. Now, sometimes coaches are afraid to go back to the well if something is working. They might not have faith in execution, they might think defenses have made an adjustment to their concept, but Munkin knows to go pedal to the metal again when necessary. Now he moves around his chest pieces a bit so the Dolphins can't catch on, but it's still the same concept. Now Rashad Bateman, the receiver, is in a similar nasty split. Not quite the same, but it's reduced. And Munkin has Nelson Aguilar motion across to make sure the nickel corner follows him in man coverage. This indicates to Lamar it's man, and once again, when Riley goes under the rub, it's too easy. Still a difficult throw, but this is wide open in the NFL. When looking ahead at Lamar's postseason prospects, especially a few years removed after the rough 2019 experience, where this team feels pretty similar to the one back then, I will say there are times where he's inaccurate. He's not consistent in hitting his receivers on the correct shoulder, or they'll have to reach out of their frames for the ball. He is 8th highest in bad throw percentage according to Pro Football Reference, and also according to Pro Football Reference, his on-target percentage is 24th highest, and sometimes when he's starting to run and throw, he's careless with his footwork, which of course makes his accuracy problems worse. These problems aren't by any means insurmountable. But what we saw years ago in that 19 Titans playoff game was a team that suddenly got down after a few bad series and didn't have a second pitch. Well, now they do, and that is thanks to Lamar. I still have the Ravens as my Super Bowl favorite. 
I think they've learned from that Titans upset, which was devastating. And now that they're in a similar position with a similarly dominant team, I don't think anybody is going to surprise them in the same way. Lamar Jackson was incredible back in his first MVP season, but he was a completely different player. Now he is refined from within the pocket, no matter what the coverage is he can pass or run, and he is finally aided with good skill talents and a very good offensive coordinator. This time, the Ravens are different. This time, they know how to play, and this time, they will win the Super Bowl. This